My name is George Milner and I'm presenting the second of two abstracts looking at perioperative oxyhemoglobin saturation and oxygen therapy in orthopaedic surgical patients. This one describing oxygen therapy in patients with high normal SpO2. The consequences of overoxygenation have been well categorised in multiple different patient populations. We conducted an audit and re-audit of oxyhemoglobin saturation and usage of supplemental oxygen in patients undergoing orthopaedic procedures over two periods of time. These corresponded to the two peaks in UK hospital admissions for COVID-19, the 30th of March to the 26th of April 2020 and the 28th of December 2020 to the 24th of January 2021. Using data from EPIC, median oxygen saturations and oxygen therapy were calculated for five perioperative stages. Preoperative, in the immediate postoperative period, and for days one, two and three post-op. Excluded from this analysis were patients under the age of 18, patients with COPD and patients requiring mechanical ventilation. Data were analysed using SPSS and the results of the two audit cycles were compared no significant differences in key patient demographics and ASA scores were observed. Overall, our results showed high rates of concurrent high normal SpO2, given as an SpO2 of greater than or equal to 97%, and use of supplemental oxygen. Of those with median SpO2 of greater than or equal to 97%, 59% in cycle 1, and 62% in cycle 2 were receiving oxygen therapy in the immediate post-operative period. This dropped to 22% and 23% on post-op day 1, and 13% and 9% on day 2. No statistically significant difference was observed between the two audit cycles. In conclusion, this audit and re-audit cannot prove that all patients with high normal SpO2 did not need oxygen therapy, or could safely have had their oxygen therapy titrated downwards. However, we suggest a need for increased awareness of perioperative oxygenation and future research is required to investigate the potential to safely decrease oxygen therapy and hence reduce risks of overoxygenation. Even in the immediate postoperative period, when use of supplemental oxygen was expected to be high, use of incentive spirometry may be one method for achieving reductions in oxygen usage safely. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen and do get in touch if you have any questions or inputs into this discussion.